I measured this measurement here, which is right here. And now, after we talk about what shapes we have, I'm going to go in and I'm going to clean this up and I'm going to reduce now that it's slither hard and I can touch it without it moving. It's on the um, medium size. It's not, I'm not leaving a fingerprint on the leather hard surface. I'm able to touch it and it's nice and firm and I'm going to put it back on the wheel, trim this area and then um, check my lid to see how it fits. I did make a few lids for this one and this is what you saw in that other bit of the video but you were looking at it straight on. So I use the calipers to measure the inside, make my line of where it's going and then when I was throwing this off the hump, I measured here to the outside and it shrunk a bit now. But I can see that it's fitting in very well. Let's look at that. This one may have shrunk a bit more. Got some room in there. Um, just like anything, you want to make more than one lid. I always stick my finger on something drop it and this one's a little bit tight so it's just a little bit bigger but I think that's going to be a better fit but I'm still going to keep both of these just to make sure that I have enough so those are those two styles and this is the style that it's not completely flat it's got a little bit of a curve but this is under four inches so I could have made this very flat and it I still wouldn't have to worry about it um, slumping. Also, I'm using earthenware. If I was firing, if I was making this in porcelain or stoneware and firing to cone 10, it's very important if it's over four inches wide that you make sure that you've got this little bit of a curve. It, it's an arch that holds the weight of the knob when I trim that on that'll keep its shape as it's fired. Um, earthenware is a low fire clay and it's not going to get to that high of a temperature where the clay warps due to the weight that's on top. Here's pot number two. And you can see got the traditional like teapot shape. But I just have a simple, instead of going in and making a flange like I did on this one, it just has a simple rim. So the pot, the lid is going to sit over the top of that. And I still have it attached. Um, I can trim a little bit here, but um, just a nice basic shape. And then I have my lids for that. And this is still pretty wet. I don't want to get stuck on maybe a little too small. And we are checking this one by measuring the inside. We've got here and the outside. Maybe so you can see it a little bit better here that we've got here. And we're checking this measurement. That outside, I want the lip to fit right in there. Let me. And again, I made a couple because it doesn't always work out exactly, and who knows what I'm going to do to it. So this could be one that can sit right on top. And I'll be trimming this off. This was off the hump. But you can see that I took this measurement, which I recorded here, and I took this measurement, which is the outside, so that this flange fits right inside here, where the edge of the pot fits within these two flanges. And I made this quite a bit larger and you can kind of see it in the profile. It's nice that it sits out here. It's not giving me a good design idea right now because I've got so much clay on the top. And that's just so I can handle it and move it around safely. So I'm going to set that one here. And I have one more. It's just a little bit more of a domed shape. I was thinking, oh, it might be fun to have this sit up a little more. And it's also very wet and hasn't shrunk as much as this. And it looks like it's going to need to be 
altered. But that's a higher point. So it's always good to make at least two or three lids. So I'm just going to get these out of the way. Whoops, that one's still really soft. So that we can talk about our other pot. This is number three. And again, this is a similar shape, but this one I went ahead and I split the rim as well. It's very similar in shape to the body of this pot, but I've split that rim. And I'm going to clean that up a little. That's why it's still attached. You don't have to leave your pots attached. You can just um, cut them off and recenter them. I'm a little lazy on this one and I decided that I wanted to leave it attached. And we've got the wood burning stove going here and it dried a little bit faster than I expected, which can be a good thing. So I've got this little pot that the knob sits up, but I want it to sit right on the inside of this. So when I measured this, I measured, and this one didn't have a big flange. This is the one I just bent out a bit. And you'll see that in an earlier video. I measured this point, which is here, inside the flange, and then the inside I measured right in here and put that on over here. So as I was making this, and this was on the hump, I'm measuring this point here to go inside that flange to fit this point fits right in here. And then I went, I was measuring this point here the inside for this to fit in and you can see this has got a bit of a curve to it let's see if it'll even fit in oh it just does but I think I need to trim a little down there and this is still kind of damp and it fits right in and I don't know do I like it with the knob up higher I thought I'd make a few other ones so I have this little guy it's probably too tall. I can make that smaller, but at the time I wasn't ready to make those decisions. And that sits down a little bit lower. Gives you a different idea. And I've got to trim all these up and make them look nice. We're just having a review before we do the next. And then I made one of these little guys. I'm not sure if we're going to fit in there. Let's see. This is still pretty wet. And it's got to dry a little more. This is firm leather hard. So I'm hoping that that'll work and this will just sit down a little lower and I can have another knob. So I'm not convinced that this doesn't fit yet. I'm going to wait for it to, I'll trim it up, I'll let it dry a little bit more and I'll check it again. But these are two different style of lids that can go on this type of rim uh, flange that we've cut. Okay.
Okay, so I've got this on. It's not exactly centered exactly where I want it, but we're going to work with it. So I'm just going to let my hand kind of go along with it. And I'm just going to take this part off, kind of clean that up. I'm just cutting through. Maybe I'm taking a little too much, but that's all right. Totally fine. So I've got this. Now I'm going to use my trimming tool. Just a little bit in there to kind of clean that up. I'm just going to take off that sharp part. Okay, and then I was noticing that this kind of flattened out on me. And I'm just going to clean that up a little. And the best thing I can say about when you're doing lids is this area right here is rounded and you're rounding the edge of the lid to fit inside. So there we go. Looks pretty good. I'm going to have to clean off what's on the inside. Make sure it's clean up underneath. And since I'm here, I might as well do a little bit of trimming here. Take my undercut. put you on pause till we get the lid. Okay, so I have my different lids and I'm just going to check them in here. I think this is the one that I thought fit the best. Look at that. Dream. That's the one I'm going with, I think. Even though I've put my finger on it there. Let's try this guy. This one's a little small and it's still a little wet, so I think it's going to shrink, but it finds its own center because of this rounded edge. This edge on the inside's rounded, this one's rounded here, and it fits right in there. And then I did not throw a thick foot, but I cut it off with a little wiggle wire, as you can see here. So I'm just gonna take this on the edge and give it a roll Let's look at the bottom. I'm just going to take my thumb, kind of finish that off, push this in a little, and we're done. So now I want to trim this one with a knob. And I'm looking at this, and the consistency is perfect. It starts to get a little thick here, but um, I'm going to go ahead and trim this off. And it's a Okay, so this is pot number one, and I realized that my camera turned off when I did this lid, but um, I want to talk about it anyway, because it's another way that a pot can fit in a flange like this that's reduced and a different design element. This is our lid with the slight 
curve on the top um, and it fits right in. It's got a little wobbled top, but it's nice that it sits in and then you see the knob. This one, just as a design, this was thrown on a bat, pulled up. It could also be done on the hump. The knob is hollow, so I opened up and then closed this, but it is sitting down inside. And the measurements that I took were the sides, which goes to this opening, and then the rim, which was measured here, just like we measured the edge here, that's this edge. So, and that sits right down. Now, for a pot this size, I would say this is a lot of space to lose inside your container. So I don't know if this is the best lid or you could do this design where it was a little bit lower, but I just wanted to show you another lid design that can fit in to the pot. And that is the finished pot number one. And again, this is the one that we just did the little rounding on the bottom. Put that one aside. Then we have pot number two. Move this over a little. And let's bring this guy over. It's been trimmed on the bottom. And this one we just did a little edge with the wiggle wire. It's a nice little shape, very simple rim, just a regular rim, it wasn't split, but a more complex lid. And this lid's a little bit wider, but this area right inside sits on the top. And you get this nice profile, and you don't need a knob because you can just pick it up on the edge. We have another lid with the big knob that sits right on. This one sits up kind of high, which is cute. It's on and, on and it's a little wet. I can still, I trimmed this a little bit on the edge, but what's nice is I didn't want any thick areas. So I pulled that up and I also trimmed on the inside of that one. This is just another style of lid that can go on a pot like this. And then I have one more that looks like the larger one, but just sits on. And I find this the least successful of all of them. It's a little too small for me, but I'm gonna hang on to it. And if I put a spout on here, this may be the perfect lid, but at the point right now, I like this one. I think it sits out nice. It's not as far as the edge. This is a nice profile to this pot. And that's pot number two with its three lid choices on there. So let's go to pot number three. Set this over. Need my visual. Okay. So pot number three is very similar to pot number two in the shape. It's a little bit smaller, but this is the one that I pulled out and made a little gallery in there by bending this out instead of splitting like we did with pot number one. And these lids are very similar to this larger lid that I made where it's hollow on the inside. I pulled the top up. And this one I'm measuring here to fit on the inside. And then this edge of how it sits in. This one sits down nice. I'm not so sure about this knob, but you know, it's just another style that can go along. Then I have a second one that I've measured here for the inside and here to sit right inside that curve. Oh, that one looks nice, sits right in there. Looks good, easy to pick up. Put that on the side. This one's kind of a combination 
of what was going on with pot number two but and pot number one because I've got this edge and this edge to worry about and it just fits right down in there and sits and has a different look. It sits right up on the top, which is kind of cute. And I put a little bit of a decoration on the edge, just a little spot that's gonna help me when I glaze. So I'm gonna keep all three of these lids and maybe in another video, we'll put on a handle and a spout or maybe just two little handles. Maybe it's something that you wanna keep little things in. But I just wanted to show all the different types of lids you can make for three different types of pots and the different type of gallery. Either it's sitting over or it's sitting in and different ways to create this space to hold the lid. I like the way this one sits down in there so when you're pouring it's not gonna come out. Um, maybe I'll cut that down a little bit, but it's easy to pick up. We might even talk about lugs on the side of this for handles. Uh, we could talk about spouts. After this, this is a traditional like teapot shape along with this one. How would you go ahead and decide where the spout is? How does it relate with your lid and your handle? So we're doing different types of lids on different shapes of pots.